okay i know this may the topic title may be sounding new to you you may have read this topic somewhere in your textbooks but uh, due to the limited resources available in our country i think most of you may not have practiced what is hbot or hyperbaric oxygen therapy and how we can utilize it in clinical medicine we all know we are surviving at the sea level pressure with the 21% of oxygen in our body we are doing wonders now we will see if we get a 100% oxygen under an increased pressure what we can do so this is my disclaimer slide i'll be mentioning about the principles and mechanism and the indications approved by the higher authority and uh, the problem wounds especially most of us are diabetes uh, practicing in the field of diabetes our experience and available evidences this is a history of hbot because you all know that with the discovery of the oxygen in 1775 by priestley has revolutionized the use of oxygen in clinical practice we know that uh, the henshaw first used compressed air about 400 years back but uh, this has gained momentum over last uh, 200 years but still it is not that used in our country so the first use which has been used in decompression sickness way back in 1937 from there up because during the second world war and 1975 the regulation body has come into place which is in place in usa and in 1966 indian navy has first obtained the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and they were using it for the battlefield injuries and decompression sickness which was very common in divers and the american college of hyperbaric medicine and international society has revolutionized the use of hbot in clinical medicine the hbot simply means the hyper means high the baric means pressure you are giving an intermittent inhalation of 100% oxygen for a patient who will be sitting in a specialized chamber i think the one atmosphere what we are uh, living that is 760 mm of mercury so based on the basic simple principle of what do you call the henry's law we, when we go back to the our uh, plus 2 time we know that henry's law because when wherever we increase the pressure the solubility of the gas will be increasing so we all know that oxygen transport is basically 97 percentage bound to hemoglobin and rest is in the dissolved form so the dissolved amount of oxygen which is in the plasma which is the principal factor which decides the cellular function to happen so wherever you increase the pressure there will be more oxygen will be absorbed and uh, as depicted in the picture you can see when you give under higher pressure 100% oxygen there will be more oxygen which is diffused in the plasma and the cellular function will happen so this is the effect of hbot if you give from one atmosphere absolute where you and me is sitting now it will go into 5.62 when we subject a person to 2 or 2.5 ata in an increased pressure we have two options to give that is one is a monoplace chamber one person at a time but it has got its own limitations multiplace means you can keep more persons we use a four person at a time and we can even the foreign countries has got 10 or 15 people at a time this is the lower one is a hapo bag which is usually used in transporting a patient from a critical area especially those who are going for a high altitude visit if they come across a high high altitude pulmonary edema and cerebral edema they will be immediately transported to a lower altitude level to avoid the consequences little bit of physiology how it acts is you can know that the high oxygen tension becomes overcomes the hypoxia and there will be centrifugal diffusion which will be promoted at the capillaries and the venule uh, venous level so more oxygen will be diffused as you can see in the when, whenever there is hyperoxia there will be more oxygen which is diffused there will be reduction in edema but there is there won't be any compromise in cardiac output there will be 25% but it will not produce any physiological uh, problem so this is very important in facilitating the treating the crush injuries and compartment syndrome and uh, uh, facilitating the take up of uh, flaps and uh, Uh, skin graft surgeries as you all know oxygen has got a bacterial and bacteriostatic role because th the first use of hbo has been com uh, come into picture when they were started using it against the gas gangrene which is very common in our among our soldiers when they are getting exposed to battlefield injuries so it has got a potential anaerobic thing and uh, the pmn cells are rendered sluggish and ineffective in hypoxic environment so when if you can overcome the hypoxia the chemotaxis and all other functions of the polymer no nuclear cells will improve the angiogenesis and epithelialization the in wound healing the basic thing is the basement membrane which is consists of the type 4 collagen and hyperoxia enhances the endothelial response to angiogenic factors one thing you have to keep it in mind in angiogenesis the studies had proved that this angiogenesis will never promote a tumorogenesis cell replication because we all know that terminal step of collagen synthesis the hydroxylation of proline lysine it depends upon the oxygen tension so if we can improve the oxygen tension the local tissue above 30 mm of mercury and the, the collagen synthesis will promoted and this will help in the wound healing 
antibiotic synergy, we use these are the reserved antibiotics, especially you use in diabetic food management, that is aminoglycosides, the pleuroquinolones. These need the presence of oxygen for a mem uh, transport across the membrane. And the, when you subject an individual to H <coughs> HBOT, sorry, the uh, membrane transport of these molecules are found to be improved because they are dependent upon the oxygen saturation. Regarding the selection of patients about after the detailed history and the clinical examination, you have to do all the routine clinical biochemical evaluation irrespective of the etiology, rule out the pregnancy, chest x-ray is a must, but two investigations which is very important is you have to take an ECG and a pulmonary function test. ECG, you, if there is any evidence of bradyarrhythmia, you please don't subject the individual for HBOT. And pulmonary function test to rule out whether there is a, a severe obstructive or a restrictive lung disease is there. And if, if there is a uh, history of a COPD or chronic bronchitis, it's better to do an HRCT to rule out any possibility of emphysematous bullae. Otherwise, it can rupture under the high pressure. This is basically for the wound management that our center is concentrating. We take a pre and post uh, wound photograph. We'll do the Doppler study and the TCPO to measurement. MRI in selected cases when we want to rule out a Charcot arthropathy or an osteomyelitis. This is a profile, this is an internationally accepted profile. One session, it is of 90 minutes duration, and the frequency is five days a week. Way we are restricted to five days a week for 90 minutes is, if there is any possibility of a cumulative toxigen, uh, accumulation with toxigen, it, uh, oxygen, it will be prevented, because there won't be any pulmonary toxicity or uh, CNS toxicity if you follow this schedule, because whenever the 100% oxygen comes into picture, we always think about the pulmonary and uh, CNS toxicity. This is the model we use it in our uh, hospital. Uh, this is the panel view. This is a manually operated. Now, computer operated is also there. This is a, always there is a nursing staff which will be sitting inside along with the patient in our chamber in case of any emergency. Till date, we are not faced any critical emergencies during the session because we started this facility eight years back in Trivandrum. This is a mask through which the patient takes a one-way well. Through one side, the oxygen goes in, and through the other side, the exhaled carbon dioxide, and which will be delivered outside the chamber, not inside the chamber. These are the uh, higher authorities which uh, regulates the indications, uh, especially the UHMS based in the USA and the European Paramedical Society and the German Society. These, uh, they give the indications. These are the indications approved by the UHMS. These are the uh, primary. You can see conditions like air, gas embolism, carbon monoxide poisoning, decompression sickness. Th these stages, this is the primary modality of treatment. If you subject an individual, the individual will survive. And two more condition is high altitude pulmonary edema and high altitude cerebral edema. The items which I had highlighted in the blue color, that is healing of problem wound, necrotizing tissue infections, refractory osteomyelitis, these are the indications we use more in our center because our center is a, a trauma care center. This is an uh, upcoming area that is oncology. Most important thing is you can use it for a lot of mandibular uh, osteoradionecrosis. You can use you can use it for cyclophosphamide or the uh, radiation use, hemorrhagic cystitis, and uh, you can use it for the vesicular cutaneous fistula following um, the surgery in um, malignancy patient. And uh, the Amrita Institute of Kochi is doing a lot of research in the field of uh, the use of uh, in glioblastoma multiforme after the resection, uh, how it will prevent in the recurrence. These are the current trends. There is always a debate about these uh, things. I will pay few seconds for this. The post-traumatic brain injuries. If you subject an individual as early as possible, the traumatic brain injuries will give a good response. And uh, autism, it is always a skeptical area to cover, but uh, uh, certain studies promotes the use of HBOT in autism, but uh, from my experience and uh, my co uh, colleagues' experience, I think it is not a, uh, it won't give a, uh, what do you call it, a dramatic improvement in autism patient. Cerebral palsy, always, uh, again, debatable, there was, Neubar has described that it is very useful because of the theory of the, whenever there is an injury happens to the brain, there will be deposition of the idling neurons around the periventricular area. Whenever you give an uh, um, uh, oxygen, it will take up its function, but it is always, it, the RCTs are not that favorable in the use of cerebral palsy. The post anoxic encephalopathy, hypoxic ischemia, uh, the re, uh, is a very good area. And I think in the next five to 10 years, this will be the area of interest, by rehabilitation of sports injuries. It started way back in 2005, when during the IPL, the first uh, the Dale Stain has been rehabilitated in uh, Indra Prasa Apollo in the chamber about 17 years back, uh, 15 years back when the IPL was going on, and it is very useful in sickle cell crisis. The contraindications, you should not submit any patient who has got a history of a pneumothorax or a bullet, you should not submit him. And other things are related to upper respiratory infection because he may have a barotrauma or a ear pain which can occur and uh, high fever and uh, claustrophobia. But nowadays the chamber is designed in a beautiful fashion, the claustrophobia factor you can almost, you can eliminate completely. 
side effect, the middle ear trauma, the sinus barotrauma, and reversible myopia. This entity is very rare if you use it for, restrict up to the use of uh, pressure of about 2.5 ATA. If you go above 3 only, there is a chance. This is what I, my job is today, if you, uh, to make you all uh, aware about these things. These are the problem wounds we come across in our day-to-day uh, -day practice. Basically, it is because of the tissue hypoxia. If you can resort to any system which can overcome the hypoxia, we can do wonders to the patients. This is our data two phase of study. It is expected to be published soon because there was some issue with the ethical clearance uh, in now it has been uh, after the COVID uh, we are stuck with the communication now it, uh, we are cleared and we are expecting a soon publication and uh, um, in the last eight years we had uh, treated more than 2600 patients of different etiologies mainly the uh, wound issues and there was no unwanted event and the average success rate was somewhere around 70 percentage this is how we uh, classified the wounds which was fully granulated, partially healed and dropout. Those patients who had not completed about 10 sessions of treatment, we had categorized them under the dropout category. You can see that in the two phases, average number of patients was about 210 and the, uh, around 20 percent of patients came to us with a history of a uh, small, means a, a regional amputation that may be a disarticulation of toes or something. The uh, POD was very high in that and uh, diabetic ulcer was a major etiology in almost all the groups. So you can see the pre-TCPO2 level was about 30 to 35 and the post-TCPO2 has gone up to 55 to 60 and that may be the reason the patient's wound has been um, shown a dramatic improvement and the, the Wagner stage was the leading group, uh, the stage 3 was the leading in etiology and no improvement was almost in about 9 cases and majority of the cases was suffering with an osteomyelitis with a Charcot arthropathy. This is the average number of sessions in our study which has shown that about 23 will be ideal. The TCPO2 improvement, as I said, there was an average increase of uh, 22 uh, millimeters of mercury has happened. This was the uh, one um, amputated limb which has been advised for BK amputation. He had come to us. You can see uh, this patient is doing, there is no recurrence for last two and a half years with the wound. This is a necrotizing fasciitis. This is still he is undergoing treatment, 10 sessions over. I think uh, you can see the fully sloughed uh, tendo achilles. Now the granulation has uh, covered the tendo achilles and he is doing well. And this was again a critical limb ischemia following an RTA and we had uh, given the HPOT and he had uh, after the uh, some orthopedic procedure I think uh, he is completely doing it. He was a driver now he has shifted to a shop uh, uh, worker. This is again an interesting finding we have seen in diabetic foot osteomyelitis. It is a very useful modality of treatment. This uh, we had presented it in DFSI conference last year. The clinical utility the, uh, the, uh, the patient who was in, in, included in the study was about 130. You can see the all these patients who has been not referred to the uh, improved by the standard modality of treatment which has been referred to us only subjected for HPOT in this study and, you, uh, and uh, basically the duration of diabetes was very high about 50 percentage was showing 10 to 15 years of duration with the high incidence of peripheral arterial disease. You can see the clinical presentation the ulcers with sinus is leading the chart and uh, the, the clinical and x-ray evidence was uh, about uh, 50, 45 percentage patients it was positive. And you can see the inflammatory parameters before the treatment and it is coming down and the renal function also improved. Probably it may be because of the improvement in the treating the infection that has uh, given a positive result. This was again the uh, gram uh, um, positive organism, as, uh, negative organism was leading the chart in the uh, osteomyelitis group and uh, about 63 patients has completely healed in, from this study. And this is a uh, articles which is uh, promote the hyproxia will promote the bone healing because it will promote the osteoblast function and it will increase the strength of the bone also. This is uh, 10 years back we had published this. This is a case series study of how we can use HBOT in uh, cyclophosphamide induced cystitis. I think it is a very wonderful modality of treatment. Still it is used all over the world and it is an accepted indication. Um, this is again as I said necrotizing fasciitis or necrotizing soft tissue infections will respond uh, very fast and it will give you a wonderful result and uh, this funeous uh, gangrene this has been uh, responding very well especially in diabetic patients. This is a upcoming area that is uh, inflammatory bowel disease especially in ulcerative colitis or uh, inflammatory bowel disease this has resulted in healing of fistula and all other complications which is not uh, um, respond, uh, what you responding to the traditional modality of treatment with the steroid and the other drugs. This is, a, this is an interesting case which we had faced in our last year. Which this, this was the first reported case of type 2 deconversion sickness um, completely treated in any civil hospital in India. I'm mentioning about civil hospital, not military hospital. This was a fire safety officer. He had a decompression sickness reported to us in a comatose state. He has been completely recovered after the seven days of treatment with the SPOT. 
Uh, this was the international recognition we got in the um, Diabetic Book Society Gulf meeting and you and us update for our work. And this is the upcoming age. A lot of people you may have heard about oxygen parlors and other things, how this will prevent an aging process. So a lot of studies are uh, coming up. We know that there is an oxygen paradox which is playing a role in the age. So if you improve the hype, you promote an hyperoxia, there will be more uh, chances of the anti-inflammatory damages which is happening into the body. And you can see when you subject an individual to hyperbaric oxygen therapy, the stem cell stimulation which will be improved, the angiogenesis also will be enhancement and there will be alleviation of inflammatory response, especially the interleukin-6 and interleukin-8 cell. So this will uh, help us in what you call the proper aging or promote our aging process by, it has been shown by the studies that the insulin sensitivity will be improved. There will be, it is, the beautiful finding is that the cognition is very much improved in if anybody is subjected to uh, SPOT, especially that is what it has been used in uh, cerebral palsy. This again, this, but this is always a, a critical point. I think uh, RCTs are not that in favor of using SPOT in cerebral palsy, but still a lot of people are using it. Maybe something is better, maybe based on the policy, something is better than nothing. And refractory mucormycosis, we had few patients, uh, especially during the COVID time because of this uh, you know, higher incidence of mucormycosis. And uh, we just be, again, it is shown a good response. And this is the area which is uh, coming up uh, significant, that is tumor hypoxia play a central role in many uh, malignancies. And if we can target the tumor hypoxia, I think there will be a lot of good results, especially you can use it in, as I said earlier, the breast cancer, the mandibular region, the uh, head and neck cancers, the colorectal cancers, and the brain tumors because this is the ORN study, which is very, it's very useful in osteoretinacrosis of mandible HPOT. And this was, we had uh, six cases of calciphylaxis, and uh, it's a very difficult condition to treat uh, because of the constant dialysis and the intractable pain. I think patient has a uh, lot of improvement. At least they will get rid of their pain. Intensity of the pain will reduce. This is again traumatic brain injury, uh, as I said earlier, because time is running, I'll just rush through. This is a study again conducted in uh, Kerala. I think it is in Amrata Institute, it is Snake Envenomation Tertiary Care Center. They said that there is a less need for um, what you call wound debridement and uh, the when, uh, whenever they applied the um, uh, graft or flap, it has been taken up. This again, the heel pad avulsion. These are the facilities which is available. I think there are nowadays about 15 to 18 centers are there all over the India in private sector, but uh, the majority is used in the military setup. So I think the next uh, few years will be the oxygen revolution. And these are the articles or the academics which if you, anybody wants, you can um, read it. And the most important thing in this hyperbaric medicine is you have to assess the quality and you have to, the quantity of HBOT and you have to balance it and you have to use it based on your clinical experience. So when we fight a battle like uh, non-healing wounds and problem wounds, I think proper timing of the weapon is very important. You can't use your best weapon as the last resort when you are fighting a battle. Otherwise, you will lose the war. So it is not entirely impossible that someone in the next decade, the professors of medicine will have a difficulty in explaining why treatment with oxygen was not widely accepted much earlier. I will stop here with this statement. Once again, thanks for Anu sir, Murthy sir, and Srivastava for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you all. Have a nice day. Jai Hind.